I'm gonna help fix what ails you. Don't go away. Hello everyone and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Today I'm going to help you fix your home kit issues for once and for all. Disclaimer, you're not going to like this, but trust me, in the end, you'll thank me. So let's start by talking about the issues I was having and that you might be having too that forced me to take drastic measures. I couldn't for the life of me get an invitation through to my wife for her to join our home kit home. Every time I would send her an invite, she would get the endless spinning wheel of death and it would never let her accept my invitation to the home. Sound familiar? Also, I noticed that I couldn't access my own HomeKit details. In HomeKit settings, you see your name along with other users. By touching the icon, you can change access levels and other settings. Well, I couldn't get into my own name to do anything. It would just send an error that the user wasn't available. I also noticed that I couldn't get my home pods to do things like recognize my voice or do personal tasks. I had constant issues with devices not responding. It was a, a real headache to add new components. I felt like I was always resetting my home pods. The whole thing, it was just really a big nightmare. If this is close to what you're experiencing in any way, it's going to cure all of your ills, but be forewarned. It's a very bitter pill to swallow. My journey began with the internet. I searched and read and I searched some more and I found plenty of home remedies, none of which worked. In fact, by trying so many half-baked fixes, all I was doing was making the issues worse and worse as HomeKit became less and less stable. I finally gave in and I called Apple for support. After trying many resets and logging in and out a zillion times, my case was booted up to the engineers who came back with the brilliant solution to reset HomeKit. This was a horrible answer for me because of the 50 or so devices in my home and the issues I was having with HomeKit. It sounded like the cure was worse than the illness. Well, I was wrong. So how can you fix your problems? I'm about to tell you, but listen. Do yourself a favor and watch to the end for the pros and cons before just clicking off in anger at this fix. You're going to thank me. Seriously. You're going to need to wipe out all vestiges of past versions of HomeKit and HomeKit settings. You'll need Apple support for this, and it will indeed mean you need to reset every device in your home. But it will fix your problems, and HomeKit will work like you've never experienced it before. So, why should you take this drastic step? Because otherwise, you're going to waste a bunch of time effort and deal with a ton of headaches only to eventually give up and either live with the problems you're having or finally come back here and do this anyhow. So why not skip all the pain and frustration and just tear that big ugly band-aid off? So how do you start? You start by backing up your important data and make a full backup of your iPhone. This way if things go south you can at least get back to a working point. After the backup, and this is an optional step, reset your phone. I kept my carrier settings, and then set your phone up as a new device. This is a good thing to do periodically for all of your devices, as it gives the machines a chance to dump stuff they don't need, and will allow everything to run better. Again, this is recommended, but it is optional. Now with your phone set up as new, and with you logged back into your accounts, call Apple Tech Support. Now by their nature, support will want to go through their checklist, but save both you and them some time and tell them straight away 
you want a reset profile for HomeKit. So what the heck is a reset profile? Well, it's a special version profile that will add a HomeKit reset button to your phone. This will wipe away any and all traces of a past HomeKit life. You see, for me and a lot of you with the invitation issue, I'm betting that at some time or another, you were sharing an Apple ID with someone else. You might now all have permanent IDs and be using family sharing, but right there, somewhere in the bowels of HomeKit, there is the problem. We have to get HomeKit to forget that past life. This reset button profile will do just that, but it will also make HomeKit forget, well, everything. Your Apple advisor will send you the profile and tell you how to install it properly. Be sure to follow all of their directions, but briefly, you'll install the profile, open the Home app and leave it open for 30 minutes, then go into your phone's settings, then Home, and you should see an option for resetting the configuration. Do the reset, then restart everything. After restarting, you should now have a fixed, clean HomeKit slate ready to go. My advice is to try and access your personal settings right off and then immediately try to add an offending user to make sure the problem is fixed before starting to re-add all of your stuff. The profile will drop off after you have successfully run it and you should now have a trouble-free HomeKit experience. So here are the pros and cons to help you decide if this is the path for you. But first, let me say unequivocally, I am not an Apple tech. Your mileage may vary, but this really does seem to be the only current workable option Apple is providing right now to address this specific problem. So press forward, fully worn. Anyhow, pros and cons. Let's start with the cons first. You will lose all of your HomeKit settings and have to reset everything. This is a major headache and a giant con. You have to have Apple's help. This is going to add a technician into the mix who might not be familiar with all of this, and that is just one more headache you're going to have to deal with. Some devices will re-add easily, but others will need factory resets. This means you'll have to learn up on clearing your devices so that you can re-add them afterwards. So what about the pros? Well, there are plenty. This offers you a great opportunity to reset your entire device. You might otherwise not want to do this, so here is a great window of opportunity. This will fix your HomeKit issues. Not only will it fix them, you'll be stunned at how well HomeKit will work now. Devices actually add easier. Oddly, once reset, most HomeKit devices seem to add in a much easier fashion than I remembered. You will regain full functionality, including with your HomePods. This is something I wanted, but was being denied. You will be able to invite anybody you want to your home the way it's supposed to be. Everything is much more responsive and reliable. Siri can actually do her job better, and you'll have a lot less issues with unreliable devices. I'll soon be releasing another video on how to clean up the last few issues through settings in your router, so be sure to watch for that. You will have fixed it the right way, meaning a more stable, permanent, complete fix. It's a perfect time to organize your HomeKit stuff, like tossing out boxes you don't need and organizing your codes. I made a numbers database for all of my codes, and now I have them readily available. A major unexpected benefit there. Someday, Apple may come out with a better way to address this. But for right now, this is the only known, proven way to fix your problems. You can continue to fight and resist, use voodoo magic and wonky workarounds, but there is only currently one right way to do this. Save yourself the time and the headaches and fix this thing right. I know this isn't the fix you or I, for that matter, would have hoped for, but it's the one we have. 
so make the most of it. I hope you like this video, and I hope it helps you fix your HomeKit nightmares. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and be sure to click the notification bell so you never miss one of my HomeKit videos. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you do bite the bullet and do this fix, I'd love to hear all about it. Well, that's it for this video. I'll let you get to it as you now have a lot of work to do. In any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing is the wrong thing. And the worst thing you can do is to do nothing. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying, be good.